78 Sports TV here, uh, back with another exclusive classic interview for you. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, Y'all know I'm doing the game dog talks and got a legendary dog man in the building. Only in America Kennels. How you doing, Brother Bakari? How you doing, my brother? Wonderful, man. Wonderful, man. How life treating you? Man, if I do complain, you wouldn't want to hear But I must say everything is so good for right now. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing real good, man. Like you say, I can't <laughs> complain, man. I'm, I'm just, hey, man, I'm happy that I even, you know, got an opportunity to speak to you, man. I could be behind bars oh. somewhere. Hey, that, that, that's, that, that, that's good for the both of us. So, yes, I appreciate the interview, brother, and I appreciate you wanting, you know, uh, to hear what I got to say. Absolutely, man. So, uh, you know, why don't you first introduce yourself to the people uh, who may not know who you are, let people know um, uh, who are you and... Um, how did you get into the dogs? Okay, well, my name is Bakari from Only in American Kennels. Um, originally from Philadelphia, I got into the dogs in uh, the, the Tidewater area of Virginia. Um, it started out, uh, me, and a friend, me and a friend of mine, we had brought two pit bulls out of the paper. I should call them pet bulls. Right. So they weren't game bred, and... Um, I wasn't thinking about any type of competitive uh, fight and anything with the dogs at that time. And, uh, he had went to a Virginia Union, so when he, uh, a friend of his had came to visit uh, us because we had a spot together. So when he came, he brought a pit with him. And, uh, we, you know, we had two of our, of our own. And all of them at the time were probably about six, seven months old. So they were all really pups. So he was talking trash to his to to my partner, and uh, he was like, "Man, that that shit y'all got ain't ain't nothing." You know what I mean? And I'm like, "Shit, it'll beat that shit you got." So to make a long story short, his little puppy beat both my pups, <laughs> and both of them ran and hot. So right. the competitive nature of myself being a former football player, you know, I'm like, "Hold on, hold on, where where you know, and where did you get yours from?" And he was like. He was like, um, he had got his out of the paper, and he had said it was a Chinaman, though. I right. said, Chinaman? I didn't know anything about no pedigrees or uh, the bloodlines. So anyway, when he leaves, I look, I say, man, I'm, 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 I'm giving mine away. He said the same with him. So we gave ours away to some other guys. And then sure enough, we went in the paper the next day, and um, I'm looking for some Chinamen. You know, so right. it's not Chinaman in the paper. A guy was selling a dog called uh, Cinnamon and Boomerang. So I said, well, damn, okay, at least it's some name is not Chinaman. He, the guy meant to put Chinaman, but he said Cinnamon. Right. So I called the guy up and was like, um, hey, um, do you, and, I, I, and for some reason I said, do you have, a, is that a Chinaman? And Boomerang, he said, yeah. I said, okay, I thought it was misspelled. I said, yeah, I'm looking for a little Chinaman pup or something. So he was like, yeah. He was like, who are you guys? I was like, you know, so at the time, I'm not even picturing that it's really scared to know, you know, who they're going to just talk to and make sure they wasn't talking to the law enforcement. Right. So I said, oh, I'm just a guy looking to buy a Chinaman pup. So anyway, make a long story. He meets uh, me, and, me and my man. We roll over to... Uh, he meets at a gas station. He circles it a few times and then the see, you know, make sure we wasn't alone. And he said, hey, man, you here for the puppies? I'm like, yeah. So we follow him to his house. So we get to the house and he's like, man, let me just, before we go in my house, why do you want these puppies? I said, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Uh, a, friend of, a friend of my man, you know, he went to college with, he, uh, he brought a little pup over yesterday and beat our puppy's ass. And he said he had a Chinaman pup. So he was like, oh, okay. He was like, I, he said, well, what did you have? I said, I, we just had something we brought out the paper. It didn't have no papers or no name with it. So he said, so you, you want to fight me? I said, hell yeah. <laughs> so house, you know what I mean? Right. We go to his house. We go inside the house. And so and he was like, uh, we can hear all these dogs in the back. You know, I, I've never been a pit bull guy's house to know they have like 20, 30 fucking pits in the back. So. He said, now, you you want something that's going to fight. I said, yeah, for the, you know, I want to say to myself, for the fifth time, motherfucker, yeah, I want, want one going to fight. Right. So he said, all right. So he said, I'm, I got a litter. 
And I'm so he took us back there and had a whole lot of dolls and he had the puppies. So I um, picked out mine and a friend of mine, he had picked out his. So, you know, we grabbed it too. So now we go back in his house and I, I um, he said, um, I don't have the, the, the papers on them, but this is the pedigree. I mean, this is how they bred. Right. But I can get them for you. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. And he was like, um, and, and like I said, I didn't know how to read no damn pair, so I didn't know what he was showing me. I just see all of this look like um, Chinese arithmetic. I'm like, okay, whatever you say. Like, but they they can fight, right? He said, he said so. We he said he got an address the next day to, to make sure we really was wasn't the law. He came over to uh, the spot, comes in, was like, okay, okay. He was like, damn, okay, well. Yeah, you definitely ain't no cop. I say that, you know, by he's, the way he could see what you know we were living. So right. he uh, he was like, "Look, man, if you serious about this thing, man, I even got better shit than that. I mean, they nice, but I got something that's already geared on up. That's already, you know, but they gonna be a little bit more money because at the he only charged me four hundred a piece for those. Right. So I said, "Well, well, yeah, man, you know," and, and I said, "Well, shit." I guess I'm, I'm interested. I was really just cool with the two pups to really just be my man's pup back when he came back. But then I'm like, well, fuck it. So he, we, we, he, so we go back to the house and I spend some more money. At this time, I pick up a half brother to Tyrone and I pick up Tyrone's little mate sister. Right. Okay. So it was both a year old. All right. So at the time, I didn't know really what I had. <laughs> you know, I didn't right. know how you know how good this stuff I got so he says what we can do to show you how good they are this Saturday it was like a Wednesday he said this Saturday we can go um, peek at these uh, two that you got for me and I'm gonna find something around their age I said okay fine so I take the two home and um, sure enough Saturday he comes scoop us up so he takes me to a place and I'm like damn you know like have a pit set up and there's a whole bunch of people back there and this, that, and other. I'm like, all right. So they got dogs and they fight. So this is the first time I've seen real fighting. Right. And um, so when I came back with my dogs, it was in, I, I, you know, I put them on, I had them on, you know, in the kennel crates. Some of the guys there was like, oh, okay, yeah, he, he got some nice little joints. So it was my time to roll. And I told him, uh, you know, you're going to get in there because I don't know how to handle the dog. So he, he gets in there with mine and uh, Bruno, I mean, uh, a dog I got named Bo, like I said, was Tyrone's half brother, had the same daddy, um, but a different mom. Right. So, uh, now, so now, now, now when you, when, real briefly, when you, when you say Tyrone, to the people who don't know, explain to people okay. who, who Tyrone was real quick. Okay, Tyrone was off of Quincy to Wild Irish Rose, which was basically an inbred palette on top, inbred stomping out of Art Missy on the bottom. He uh, was a four-time winner, four-time best in show in four different states. Yes, sir. All right. Um, Fat Bill uh, in his magazine and, and those, uh, others who saw him said that was the best male they ever saw, you know, at the time, so... Uh, well, this was his half brother, so and we'll get back into Tyrone right. later. But okay, so when they released uh, Bo, which he went right out and broke the dog leg in half, I was like, "Damn, this dog!" You know, he was rough as well, bit real hard. So he broke the dog leg, and uh, then they said, "Hold on, let's get a scratch," because he wanted to scratch the other dog. And then the dog came. He said, "I'm gonna stop it." So then I just got like about two minutes in that one and then we put uh, Tyrone's little mate sister down um, stomp and um, when we when we he, you know these are both of these are the first time they ever been looked at so um, we let stomp go she scratches dead into the dog stifle and um, has the dog hollering then gets into her kidneys and uh, they asked to get a scratch and and then the dog came and stomp, ran right back here to the, the, the kidneys again. And they broke it up. So I'm sitting there like, damn, it's only supposed to go this short. They like, no, nah, them two dogs you got is two hell of a dog. So, you know. Right. So that's 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 how I got introduced into the dogs. Right. Okay, okay. 
Well said. Well said. Um, what bloodlines did you uh, run? Well, at that time, by me coming up under the person who introduced me, and he was getting his dogs from the East Coast Assassin, which was the breeder of many of the dogs that I had got, which, I mean, like I said, I had to be the luckiest guy in the world because I just fell right into a gold mine. I mean, um, so most of the dogs that I was running was the Heavy Paladin, Heavy Stompinato, Rascal, Zebo, Jeep, and Bolio lines. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And um, uh, what were some of your favorite dogs? Well, what was your, your favorite dog and why? Well, it would have to be like, my most accomplished dog that would have been, um, that would have had to be Tyrone. Uh, it's funny because while we were looking at dogs back then, like when I said when I had got his half-brother and his little mate sister, um, I we went to a road at the East Coast Assassin's Place, and um, he, they was rolling a whole bunch of dogs that night. And he rolled Tyrone, and so this was Tyrone at a year old and Dirty Red, who both end up becoming four-time winner champions. Uh, so Tyrone rolled an hour and a half in that fight at a year old against... <laughs> An hour and a half, right? Against a head dog specialist, and he could never get a hold of him. So uh, they picked him up, and I remember saying to him, I wouldn't pay $100 for that piece of shit. And <laughs> the Parker looks back and says, you going to regret you said that shit. You're going to be trying to buy him. I'm like, shit, that's a dumb fucking dog, man. So another year... Well, I, I don't know if we can go straight into what happened a year later. Well, yeah, yeah, because we're talking about time. So a year later, I'm coming to roll into to Parker with a friend of mine. And um, sure enough, I didn't even recognize this is Tyrone. So when we when we, 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 we roll, we scratched. Tyrone scratched so hard, he scratched past us. And we grabbed his foot, and he kind of made a whimper. So when Tyrone caught back up with us, shit, he like pulled out six teeth out of our mouth from that left fang hanger. All of them teeth and the gums, he pulled up, ripped that out of our mouth. Wow. And I'm like, what in the fuck is this? Then he went into the front, our front ligaments and our front legs and ripped them out. Then he went to our dick and bit half that off. Then he hit us in our stifles and, and, and stuff, and we just said, fuck in the six minutes, we we just asked for a scratch. And we made it over and picked up. And um, then after that, Parker stayed in the pit with Tyrone, and shit, several people dropped dogs in, and he was curling them out like five or six minutes because nobody else wanted to drop nothing on them. So at that time, I'm offering him like $2,500 for the dog. Like hell no, I'm offering him five grand for the dog. And, and, and what? what and what? What year? What? What year was this? This was uh, ninety. This yeah. was ninety. But yeah, so so that was, so back in nineteen, that was some big money back in them days. Yeah, well, you know, the eighties and nineties was plenty of money running around. So absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was, that was probably the most money time. So, so you know, I I I, I told him, you know, um, so I dropped the money in the the pit he said man you might as well pick this shit up I'm not selling you the dog like damn why you want to sell me this fucking dog I'm giving him a good price and uh, he said remember a year ago you said you wouldn't give me a hundred dollars for that dog I said fuck that's Pyron he said hell yeah I said oh shit he said remember how dumb you said he was I said damn he think he's way different you know so I, and of course I couldn't buy him at that time so uh, but yeah, that, that's how I was uh, introduced to Tyrone, and um, I mean, I ended up later getting him after I flew out to um, the schoolboy's place in, um, from Virginia to go into local boys Tito with a dog and um, 
we we died game there and he was with a 40 41 that I uh and then I brought that I mean so when we came back I told you know he had to fly fly back my way to go into me with another one what other dog is when I got Parker I ended up getting Tyrone then right since the, the loss that I had because I also brought that dog to Parker so um that's that's how I got him and uh and uh then, um, do you want to hear about his matches? Or? Well, hey, most definitely. I mean, whatever you want to talk about, bro. Oh, okay, so his first match was into um, was into. Uh, shit, can you hear me? Yeah, you good. Okay, these phone calls coming in. Um, his first match was into Jesse Ross, um, Maverick off a of Grand Champion Midnight that he had. Right, and uh, how that came about is um, I was talking to uh, Jack Kelly at the time, and they was at a show that they had that way, and um, they was uh, and, and local boy Tito and them had flew up to to Jersey for that, and so they were telling me how bad this Maverick dog was that they you know they had one that had curved out, and they you know the other one didn't know how to finish it, so then uh, Jess tells him, man, y'all want to see something nice. So he brings Maverick out. Maverick's put it asleep in like two minutes. And uh, so I said, damn, what weight is They said 41. I said, good. Tell him I want to I wanna go into him. So that's how I went into uh, Jesse on that one. And um, so we we set that up. Uh, that on that card, it was me and Roster Man, uh, Boone, went into Local Boy Tito. Um, that night, so it was our two shit. Two, you know, I went into Jesse Rod, he went into Tito. Um, I um, that that match went fifty eight minutes, I believe. And um, their dog came out. He just fought the head the whole time. I mean, we just caught up to him and um, curved him out on all four feet, and then he died like a minute later. And uh, we took best of show on that that show. Um, then the second match. Um, we went into, uh, um, the mustard. to, uh, Cornelius in the out of, uh, Detroit. Right. All right. They had the, the dog, the buddy dog who had just beat champion mustard. Right. Right. And that dog was supposed to go in the roadblocks, Joey, who ended up being a, a, a grand champion, but what they said was he was scared to go into Buddy, so that's why they drove all the way from Detroit and met up with me in Maryland. So um, I knew that it was a good dog because that mustard champion mustard dog was a good dog. So mm-hmm. um, they hit, and um, that's the first time I've seen Tyrone have to switch to the face because a dog could bite hard as him or harder. They went and uh, hit the shoulders and... Uh, Tyrone went to the muzzle and, and and I mean he was up there probably for a minute and had him um did real bad business he did up there. So now uh, they went back to the shoulders and then Tyrone went to the bottom jaw of that pretty much uh had the dog fighting apprehensively. He didn't want to bring his head nowhere and he didn't want to swap. So that went thirty seven minutes. He tried to jump the pit and um then afterwards he calls uh, Roadblock up so that Tyrone can go into jail. And um, uh, Roadblock Kennels, uh, McNasty said uh, his dog can't make 41. He had 38. So, you know, right. so it, it didn't happen. That, that didn't happen. So um, then his third one went into Connie Hams um, with a dog they had that was supposed to be real bad that was taking, you know, uh, going into the generals of dogs to stop them short order. So we went into Cunningham at a, at a show in uh, the uh, North Carolina, and we won really in a minute. Tyrone scratched to the dog, nuts to the dog, hollering, and tried to jump the pit. It went nine minutes because when it was my their time to go, he was jumping the pit, and for some reason, I don't know, I let Tyrone go. And Tyrone grabbed him back into the walls until I could get a handle, made a scratch, and then the other dog didn't want to come. So that that was the third one. 
Then his uh, fourth one was into John, old man John Walston, Harry Hargrove's buddy. Um, they had a male. This was on like a, this was like eight car show. And um, I paid the forfeit because I really just took Tyrone there just to, in case the weight, you know, the other dog was overweight. But uh, Tyrone had called Coxidius like three days before the show. Right. And he was like pounds underweight. So, um, like I said, I had paid a forfeit. That bill of myself, we're back at the van, and he just feeds Tyrone two cans of chicken noodle soup. When um, Walton and them start saying, uh, calling the N-words to my brother and other people there, oh, saying yeah. that, you know, they, they scared to do it. So... At that time, my brother comes. He's trying to get the guns out the car to go back to shoot down. So, Boston man runs back and don't open the car. He just grabs uh, a dog, Tyrone, out of Bill's hand. And I said, man, what are you doing? He said, well, Tyrone's sick could still beat anybody's ace. And I don't know why, but I just walked on back to the joint. We just got in there, and um, Tyrone put him to sleep. Well, he, he quit on all four feet. I think at 56 to 58 died a minute later. So that was his fourth. And uh, we were going into a champion, Charlie, in Detroit for his fifth. But he, he died um, two weeks before. And unlike the rumors that said I left him on the mill and he, and he died, which is pure bullshit. I would never leave a dog on the mill. Um, he died on a wheel with my, my two-time winning crusher. Um, and... And um, he just passed out, so and died right then. So it was like a massive heart attack. Right. So, yeah, that was. So that's what that was the deal with Tyrone. Wow, wow. So what 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 camps did you go into uh, in your day? Well, we went into the Cunninghams. We went into STP. We went into Tans. Called out Crenshaw, but he ducked us. Um, we went into, uh, to, uh, um, God damn it, to Sonny Penny, Bob Pitts. Um, we went into, uh, Jesse Rod. Yeah, Jesse Rod. We went into the Jersey Boys. And we beat everybody, we just said, too. So. Right. <laughs> so t- tell me, yeah, tell me. Was- Tell us, tell us more about the Crenshaw Duck. How did that come about? Well, he had the Bama dog, and I had Tyrone. And those were the two forty ones everybody was talking about. So when I called him, and he heard it was me, he said he ain't going into me on the phone. Damn. So I called Fat Bill. No, I called Boone, Roster Man Boone up, and said, "Man, look, I can't jump on this goddamn Bama dog." Y'all got anything there? He was like, hell, let me call Fat Bill up. And they used the dog, John Wayne. And they went on and curved Bam out. So that's how that happened. You wow, know? wow. Okay, okay. <clears throat> uh, tell you us, know. tell the people uh, about what, what keep you used for conditioning. And, um, you know, if you want to reveal that or not. Well, I, I, I'll just say this much. You know, every keep... You know it's different because every dog is different. So certain dogs I do certain things for, but primarily the dogs that I use is is, is hard, rough dogs. So I don't really have no long distance dogs that I'm going out there for. No, I never went over an hour in my career doing my dogs. Um, so all my stuff was real power, power keep, strength condition. Uh, not not too much. Uh, I don't believe in too much treadmill or carpet mill. Very little. I use more of a weight pulling and um, um, running behind, you know, behind. Uh, uh, I, I got long dirt roads that I would use to uh, have dogs uh, run behind, you know, trucks. Um, weight pulling um, type stuff. Right, weight pull. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, plenty of mm-hmm. So, so that so that basically leads me to my next question. Um, what's more important? Uh, what was more important to you, 
mouth or gameness and why uh because uh you know back, you know in the in the day before your time um you know a lot of people focused on gameness and and you would hear stories of matches of dogs going two and three hours you know what i mean and then out of nowhere it seemed like something changed to where matches were going 15 minutes 30 minutes like like you know what i mean so a lot of people attribute that to mouth and then saying that the mouth was so devastating that it was overpowering deep game dogs uh what's your thoughts on that right okay so my thing was as i stated every dog will quit basically let, 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 let me rephrase that i should say every dog because i'm obsessed with people let's just say there is a very small percentage of what I call dead game dogs. You got deep game dogs, then you got dead game dogs. Um, and dead game dogs are dead, okay? So, um, I just feel like with the right heat on certain, on, on, on the dog, most of them are quit. So my philosophy is putting the heat on your ass. I don't, I'm, and, 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 and mouth and gameness is not my number one trait. I look for it. If you don't have a finisher, you don't have shit. Right. I don't give a fuck if you got a 15 mouth or if you game as hell. If you not don't have a finisher, you don't have nothing. So my number one characteristic that I look for in a dog, and it has to show me several times, that it can finish you. And once I got a finisher, the finisher does not mean it has to have a crushing ass mouth to do that either. But I do like hard mouth dogs, but Finish number one, harm number two, games would be at 10 bucks. Because, again, I'm not looking to go over an hour. If you get me past an hour, then good luck. But by then, I'm normally going to do enough damage and know how to finish to get the job. Right. Right. Okay, so repeat that. You said you said mouth is what and, and game this is what? I could Because you broke up a little bit when you said that. Okay. All right, I would say that finishing is number one to me. Mouth is second, and gameless will be third. Mm-hmm, okay. All right, all right. All right. Um, another question I have for you, brother, is um, do you, uh, first, what, what years would you say you operated? Just so people know, this is not, we're not talking about current uh, uh, dog uh, doing anything illegal. This is past history of the American Pit Bull Terrier. What, by what right. years are we talking about here? We're just going to say the 80s and, 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 and 90s. Right, we'll 80s and it. 90s. Okay. So now, right. uh, do you feel that black dog men of the past get the credit that they deserve? Um, I would say not really. Well, because there were plenty of, 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 of black guys that were doing great jobs. I'm talking about in the in the 1900s, early 1900s. And uh, mid-1900s, there weren't, you know, you wouldn't hear. You would just hear of Henry's and Tudors and Leitner's and Wallace's and all of these and Mayfield's and everybody else and Carver's, but there was a lot of, I mean, you had Mike Thibodeau, you had a whole lot of different black guys back then, you know, that were contributing big time. And, I mean, even in even if I'm talking about East Coast Assassin and um, Buffalo Bills and, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a whole, I mean, Pitts, there's, a, there's so many black guys that were contributing and doing well. Man, he pains and, you know, um, I mean, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a whole bunch, brother. So, no, I don't think they get their, their due uh, credit at all. Because most magazines don't even mention, don't, don't really have a mention. I mean, even when you look at the Richard Stratton book, I don't know if it had one black person in that book. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's that's the first book we all as, as dog men pretty much had to look at back then. And um, you just, you know, you just hear the Greenwoods, you know, the, the different names that I, you know, some of the ones I've mentioned. So, um, no, I don't, I don't think they get they uh, just do it all. Yeah, I, I would agree to that, man. It's a lot of good dog men and a lot of famous dogs that or, or camps that people talk about and they don't even know 
those people are you know are black and um uh right you know and it was a time where a lot of um black people we talked about this before but a time where a lot of uh where black people kind of you know not just black people but mostly black people kind of was buying up a lot of these yards and stuff out here you know what i mean um you know so it, it's it's a a lot of these dogs have i, I believe that the american pit bull terrier has been continued and has been preserved due to the efforts of people of color, uh, black and Latino people who have kept this this breed, breed alive. Because a lot of other people left, you know what I mean? A lot of people left and and they go on to deal with band dogs now, and they're dealing with American bullies. And salute to all of them. But you know, right. it's, you know, it's a lot of people who who kept the thing going. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I hear the narrative, and um, I hear the underlying, and I know the underlying message being stated when you hear things like um, the dogs of today aren't like the dogs of yesterday, the dog right. men of the day aren't like, so, it's, you know, sure, you're going to have, I mean, hell, in every generation, you had good dog men and you had garbage dog men. I mean, it's, it's no different today right. for those that are still out there with dogs doing what it is they do to say to say that because there's more blacks and latinos in it today than it was in the 80s 90s and before that it's just a slight it's a slight that the generation of dog men is doing it now saying that their dogs aren't superior or their breeding programs or they don't know how to breed or um but at the same time, if one was to see dogs from different generations and see the maturation and the evolving of the dogs, you could sit up there and be like, wow, these dogs today are a lot smarter because so many of them would play the face, whereas back in the day, they wasn't that many face dogs. And if you was, it was primarily going to come out of both of the dogs. You know, so now... You would have a dog that will start off and tear the muzzle off and then go to the places and finish one. So we can't say the dogs have stopped evolving. And if they haven't stopped evolving, then that means that there are a lot of guys that know what they're doing in terms of breeding these dogs and keeping that, you know, uh, the standard up. You understand? Right. But because, it's, like I said, there's not a lot of white guys in it today, not in America anyway. Now, of course, you get to Eastern Europe and Russia and different places. Yes, and they're doing a great job, by the way, as well. But I'm just saying, so, yes, you're going you're gonna to hear that underlying a little slight racism come in and say, well, the dogs aren't, you know, not like that. Right, right. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, <clears throat> what were some of the best matches you ever witnessed? was uh, Tyrone's. Right. I saw um, Grand Champion Hammer. I saw um, I like Gracie. I saw Gracie. She was a bad bitch. Um, Grand Champion Flop Flop was uh, the baddest bitch that I saw. Um, uh, what other dog did I did I Cause and like I said, and I, you know, I didn't ref a lot of matches all over, and people know a lot of ones I did see match and for 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 a, a good amount, they weren't shit to me. I mean, I don't know how. I guess people just had more money than they got dog, but some of the now, now what I will say too is dogs when I first got in it. You could you shit. You was gambling for three hundred dollars and, and and would see world class dogs. Right. Three hundred dollars. I've seen matches get up there, up there. Right. And I didn't think the dogs were worth three hundred dollars. <laughs> you right. know, so you know what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. I just know that there's a lot more money today, less to say than it was yesterday in terms of people. You had a few gunslingers that would bet a lot of money back then. But um, not not everybody. Not everybody worked. But today, 
you know, of course, you know, it can get up there. So, um, so some of the, what I, what I figured, what I seen weren't, you know, the greatest, but I can't say I've seen a whole lot of good dogs, period. I don't care what generation. Not to what I, not to what I think is good. Now, of course, everybody's eyes is different than what they see and everybody has their own view of what's good and what's bad and how they rate rank them. I don't care if it's, good, if it's dogs that I've read or had or seen. I mean, just, I ha- I can't say to you that I've seen a lot of, you know, right. good shows. Right. Other than the ones that came out of our corner back then, you know, just being honest. Okay. No doubt about it. Uh, um, what are some some underrated or, or or unknown dogs that were better than a lot of the famous dogs that people hear about a lot? From your opinion? Well, I'm gonna even mention Fly Flop, and um, I like to shout out to the two two nine boys, uh, Tim, who done her for instance. She was an eight time winner, five time best of show. And um, even her her last two, she was seven years old and went into two dogs that were 36 going for their grand championship. But since they didn't go into each other, what happened is they end up uh, blue can click ball grand champion flop flop at when she was a six time winner. Right. And then they did her twice. So they flew into Virgin Islands with her to go ahead and beat the the dog going for a grand championship, then came back and beat the other 36 sisters. They didn't meet each other. And Flop Flop beat her. Like I said, she went uphill two pounds both times at seven years old. And I thought that she should have easily been dog of the year. I mean, she was that bad. Right. You know, and didn't really, um, because, you know, pretty much the journal and everything went out, um, she didn't really get to recognize recognition that she should have got, but Ely should have been dog of the year, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, also, also grand champion Hammer, who beat STP, and then beat uh, Skeet, that, um, that uh, beat the hair car grows crocodile dog. He beat beat him right after, I mean, he, he beat several good dogs, and grand champion Hammer, who was really a 40-41, um, the guy Gary fought Hammer every weight but 40, even going up to 54 pounds. And he matched him in the top competition, and he won all his matches. He should have been, like, glorified. And uh, even though he on the front magazine of Tom Ratliff, um, you really don't hear about MC Hammer. So those are two underrated dogs that should be mentioned along with every household name. Yes, indeed. Uh... How was Hammer bred, if you remember? Hammer was bred. You know what? I'll can I'll be I'll send you his pedigree. Offhand, I can't exact exactly remember, but I have his pedigree, and I'll send it to you if you want to. Okay, post okay. It up, um, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, tell us about Rick Rude. Okay, Rick Rude. I, uh, me and Pat, we used to be real good friends. I won't say we're the greatest friends any longer but every day um so he was telling me about this breeding that he had done and he thought pretty nice of these puppies and that was uh Rick Rude and Caesar was in that litter um so um I said well which one you like best he said I like them both but I think Rick he was calling him Ravishy Rick. Right. He said, I like his attitude a little more. So, make a long story short, I uh, I said, what you want for him? He said, send me 1200 and I sent him to you. So, I paid 1200 for him at eight weeks. And he flew him from uh, Arizona into Norfolk, Virginia. And um, so, I go to Delta Dash and pick him up. And never forget, when I open his crate to let him out, he goes and runs right to my pants leg and starts shaking the hell out of him. I'm like, damn. Yeah, it's a yeah. spunky little bastard. I mean, he's <laughs> like he's trying to bite and everything. So I swing his ass back in the crate, take him home. But now I forgot that um, I um, had a puppy off of uh, my one time when the best of show, Baby Ruth, um, bred to champion track now. 
and we called him Malcolm X, and he was about nine to almost ten weeks old. We had him in the house. Right. So when I get in there, I just open great crate up and just let him run into the house. Right. So as I'm taking a crate and throwing a crate into the garage outside, I hear all this fucking hollering, screaming. I'm like, oh, shit. Malcolm's in the house. So now I don't know who's getting the ass kicked because Malcolm was kind of a little, he was the only one in the litter. Right. And I had took, I, you know, he was a real old macho acting puppy. So I run in there and shit, man. Um, Rick had pulled Malcolm's like right under the ear. He pulled all of the, 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 the like the hair, the flesh, the skin away from the, <laughs> from the face, man. And had it hanging. I Man. said, what the hell? And they got Malcolm pissing on himself and curse snapping and shit. So I get Rick off of him and throw Malcolm in the crate and I say shit. So I go to take Rick out in the pen and he's screaming at all the grown dogs that he's seen. Right. Trying to get at him. I said, damn. <laughs> so, you know, I called Pat up and was like, God damn, Pat, this, I got to thank you, man. This is a mother, he's a, he's, <laughs> this is a bad little fucking puppy. And he said, yeah, I, I think, thought you would like him, Bach. And, um, so, um, so anyway, by the time it was time for Rick to start rolling, um, shit, I was schooling him out on, <laughs> he was tearing dogs up his weight. I was had him rolling 15 pounds over his weight. He was tearing the ass up. Damn. So, yeah, I took Rick out and, um, Fat Bill, uh, scheduled the show in the Carolinas. And, um, it was a couple, that night, um, Perry Powell was going with, um, went into soup, won a super net stall champion. Prince was going for a grand championship. Um, Bill was going into, uh, some guys using a car mem dog that Taz made his championship that night. And, uh, Rick, he won, uh, 19 minutes. So he took best of show that night in that, in that car, on that lineup. And, uh, so, so what happened was, when we when I get Rick home, because everybody asks, well, why did you let Pat get him back? I, when I got home, uh, my son at the time was like two years old or whatever, and uh, he kind of got out of our living room through our pantry and was out in the back, and he was within inches of Rick, and I'm hearing all these dogs barking, and Rick, if he could have grabbed my son, he would have killed him. So I said, before I got to put Rick down, because he's the only dog I had that would bite. Right. You know. Um, I called Pat up and said, look, man, you want to get Rick back and trade, make me some trades? So he ended up trading me a crusher who was a one-time winner and just won in Mexico. And then we won with him at a pig picking against the Connie Hams in 19 minutes. And uh, another one I got from him. So, and then I got free breeds to Rick as long as he, you know, Pat had him. Right. So that's how I sent him back. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, so he he had that, that shit in him, that, that man, a little bit of man biter in him, huh? He didn't like shit, knee, knees down, he didn't give a fuck what it was. I'm just saying, he didn't like anything, man. Right. Um, yeah, Rick was, Rick was, uh, I mean, he was a wild, you know, you had to be a real dog man to handle him. Because even when you scratch him, if you don't let him go right away, he's going to turn and scratch into you. Right. So you just had to really, you know, he was, he was, you had to be careful. Right, right. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, man. Well, hey, brother, brother Bach, I want to thank you so much for your time, man. If you got any, uh, any, any words, what would, what would be your message, uh, to the, the young dog man today? Uh, what would be your word of advice to them? Do what makes them happy, you know. <laughs> Indeed. do what makes them happy man because at the end of the day they gotta feed and clean shit up in their yard I mean everybody is a is a genius when it comes to dogs I mean in terms of telling somebody else what to do and how to do and I'm not saying they're not giving a lot of good information to some people that are giving it to them but at the end of the time at the end of the day a lot of people may lose you know interest in their own part of it because of it's just, it's always, you know, the, the drama part of the dogs. I mean, that, a lot of times we run people away from the dogs is never the dogs. You know, everybody's in love with, with their feet, pretty much. It's just the part of the outside with, with, the, with the people in the game. You know, 
And I'm not going to lie, you got some of the most fucked up people known to mankind that are in the game. Most definitely. So you got you got dog thieves, liars, fucking rapists, child pedophiles. You got every fucking thing, man. Snitches. Murderers, you, you know, you got everybody in it. So um, a lot of times it's, it's, it's like a, a rare gem to find people like yourself, school teacher, I mean, um, school teacher as well, but school boy, you know, uh, some, some good, I mean, and there's a lot of good guys too that I haven't mentioned, you know, um, right. but it's, you know, so, um, I mean, at, at, at the end of the day, like I said, when you get in a game, everybody's going to tell you their school of thought, their philosophy. And a lot of times, like when I got in the game and I was listening to people been in the game 50 years but having fucking produced no champions or grand champions, having fucking made any, even if they brought some dogs for somebody went, but they had all of the goddamn sense in the world which and then had none at all, really. So, you know, just because a person been in the dog games for 40 or 50 years does not mean that person had been in the dog game for one year and was using rational and common sense and willing to learn, you know, the correct way is it more of a dog man than a guy who's been in the 50 years, you know? So, right. But that that's that's my thing. And and, and, the, and the reason I say that is even like looking at Shaq and them with the basketball, the, the same dumb shit like um, the players today couldn't play back in the 80s and 90s. Or the same with the football players. When we know the rules are preventing these young boys from being more aggressive. Right. You know, they're getting fined and uh, defended. Right. So they wasn't doing that shit when, when, when Shaq and Bird and all of them was playing. You know what I mean? So you can't say they couldn't make it back then. Right. They couldn't. It's the same with football. Hell, if the people was playing football like they was back then, it'd be, it'd be death on the field because you got stronger, faster players hitting sound like car crashes. Oh. So, of course, they changed the game. But I'm just saying, and, and I'm using that same analogy when it comes to the younger dogs. <laughs> You know right. what I'm saying? Like the young guys don't know, so they couldn't do it back. Why the fuck they couldn't do it back then? Well, it was so hard back then they couldn't do. They still cleaning up shit and feeding. Same shit we was doing. You know? Right. What's, what's different? So, only thing, you know, I would say is for anybody that's care to be in it and they're young, they, it, it's good if they can seek out intelligent dogmen of any era to talk to you know, when it comes to these dogs. There's a, there's a lot to learn, and I mean, hell, you never stop learning, you know, and these dogs. That's that's what I would uh, suggest to anybody. Yes, indeed, brother. <clears throat> I want to thank you so much for your time. Um, it was a great interview. Oh, my fact. Yes, indeed, man. And uh, I'm going to stay in contact with you, brother. And, uh, um, yes, sir. Most definitely, man. You, you, hey, man, take care of yourself, brother. You do the same, brother, and appreciate your time. Appreciate you, brother.